So they just threw men, women, and children all together in this area. They didn't feel the need to divide them because there weren't that many. So if women were thought to be you know, lacking any cooking or cleaning skills at home or not taking care of the home properly, they could actually be sent here kind of to work and regain those skills. Um, because it was the male's responsibility to go to work, the children would actually accompany the mother in the prison until they reached the age of 12. The first are these uh, rails which are stopping you from plunging to your death. Those were nicknamed anti-suicide rails. However, they were built after two inmates overthrew a guard to his death. Because they didn't have an understanding of suicide or mental illness at the time, I call them anti-guard death rails. 23 years later is when we shut the jail down. That was what brought a lot of light to these awful conditions, mainly administrative errors, overcrowding issues, and so on. So that is it when it's locked. To open it, you hold down the paddle. I'm only saying this for your benefit. But <laughs> there would be a chain that would be kept in place with a cement block from the inside. Um, and then the chain would follow along through the paddle, be kept in place, and then there would be a lock and a key here. So if one person got out, they weren't able to just free everybody. Um, we painted these ones, but I believe this one on the end, we left kind of untouched and unpainted. If you see anything like blood splatters, they are fake, and I ask that you don't add to them. So his name was Patrick James Whalen. He was the first man executed here, and that was on February 11th, 1869. What had happened, if anyone knows a bit about Canadian history, this was a very big deal. We had a founding father of the Confederation named Thomas Darcy McGee. He was headed back into his apartment, which is over on Spark Street, and he was actually shot to death. At the time, Canada still had their ties with Britain, although we did have our independence, and Britain was said to be heavily corrupting Ireland. This raised many um, Irish rebel groups, one of which was called the Fenians. Patrick Whalen was a very prominent member of the Irish community here in Ottawa, and he had a handgun on him that was recently shot. Apparently that was enough circumstantial evidence to indict him. His sentencing was done in just two weeks. A lot of people argue if he were to have his case again today, there's no way he would be found guilty. But a lot of people on the other hand do stand by the fact that he is the culprit of the crime. So they built those steel walls for him because they thought he was part of the Fenians and they were known for their notorious jailbreaks. The walls are crisp clean so I let that to you or I leave that to you to decide whether or not he was innocent or not. He spent 10 months in that cell before he was executed. Because it was such a high profile case, once again, the guards actually lied to the public about when they were going to hold the execution. They were really superstitious about all these things back in the day. So they were supposed to hold them on every 13th day of the month, on every 13th hour, so one o'clock. But they did this on the 11th. They wanted to deter people from showing up. Um, however, 50% of the Ottawa population actually came to the courtyard on this day. It was also the middle of a snowstorm, so I guess they really wanted to show up. What is supposed to send you to your death when you're being hung is that your neck is supposed to just break to prevent you from suffering or any strangulation. And if anyone's interested, there are numbers here. They do that by measuring your body weight and your height. They botched that for Patrick Whalen. Really not sure if that was deliberate or not, but he actually strangled in front of that crowd for over four minutes. That really traumatized everybody in Canada. So in 1869, they actually made public executions illegal. So we just built some wooden doors in front of the gallows, and I'll show you that once we go around. So after delivering their last words to the crowd, they would fall between the trap doors. Once we go to the bottom, you can actually take a look up at the entire drop, which is pretty long. But this is actually what keeps the hostel of such historical significance. It prevents us from making it wheelchair accessible or touching any of the windows, as the city really wants to preserve its heritage. It's not usually that jails build gallows permanently in the middle of the structure, but as this jail was supposed to be a symbol of death and punishment, here you have it. Technically speaking, if it was boiled up a bit, it's still fully functional. And I can even tell you where I'm living now, you would be able to see the rope from blocks and blocks away. And we actually had seven records of people who accidentally died in this hallway. There were seven records of that. It's 
said they accidentally slipped and broke their neck. However, we know they had no business being here and you can put two and two together and just assume this is where private executions likely happened. Um, if record keeping were done a lot better, we'd be able to give more of a, or give a better idea of that, but yeah. if you do come back up here to take a picture or anything, it is possible to lock yourself in, so just be careful.